So we got the object 279 here, right? Which is one of the coolest vehicles in the game. Uh, I've gotten a pretty steady 2.5 to, you know, whatever, 3.0 KD in this vehicle. It is absolutely absurd. And I just, I, I love the gun on this thing. The armor is, is wicked, right? I mean, there's there's one spot where you can get shot, right? So, like, if we look at the x-ray or the protection analysis here, um, obviously, this thing's going to struggle with, this low round, with that round. But, uh, let's say we run into Germany on the enemy team, and let's say that Germany, uh, you know, we come in, obviously, TAM to Leopard A1A1, uh, DM-13 will even just kind of kind of go in right through there and wipe out a fair bit of your crew as well as taking out the reach in some cases. Uh, but for the most part, it doesn't do too, too much. But let's say you have access to DM-23, right? Boom. All of a sudden, that, <laughs> that goes right there. So that's that tends to be the only spot that you got to watch for. And I mean, if you angle it and whatnot, uh, you, it should be fine. But just know then, if you're if you're trying to kill one of these things, shoot this general area. Uh, if it if it is angling, just that you know closer to you where it's a little bit better of an angle. Uh, this vehicle, I have to say, has been a lot of fun. Though, I've uh, definitely enjoyed my time playing it. So we'll we'll hop into a few matches here. And, uh, show you guys get a little feel for this vehicle. Right? And I don't promise anything, right? We're doing this. We're doing this live. Uh, I've I, I had another game that I wanted to upload a while back, but I did lose that file just because the uh, clip became corrupted or or whatnot. It just all oh, it just didn't look good. So that's why we're doing this live. So, let me... Okay, so we're in the match. Got... <laughs> this thing is, it, uh, it, it never gets old with how, uh, how people just kind of stare at your tank. Uh, it's so entertaining. But, this thing, it, you, you know... Whether you're doing good or bad in this, this thing is just so fun to use just because it's so unique looking, right? Like, you got four tracks. And I have to say, this thing is quite a bit of fun. Like, look at, look at this, dude. Look at this crazy, crazy contraption. Just, it's so much fun to use, and I... I don't know, I like... Uh, on one hand, right, you wish Gaijin did events to where you could... Get, the, get these things rather than doing loot boxes, like doing some crazy amount of challenges or whatnot. But then again, you, you also feel for all the people that were here for this event when it did come out, right? Same as the IS-7. Um, and it was, you know, it's, it's just like it's a super cool thing and you don't want to take that like special... Uh, not nostalgia, right? Because it, well, maybe you could have nostalgia for the vehicle because if, if it reminds you of like way back when, right? But, um... It's... 1,200 meters. On. Oh, just got our breach sniped. But, like, this vehicle is, is definitely, um... been a lot of fun to use. Uh, I think... I think it's, you know, it's like, it's one of the cool things about being a Gaijin partner, right? Is you, you can get to tr test out these vehicles. It, you know, there's been a lot of vehicles that I've gotten uh, test drives for and tried out and like, oh, we're going to make some crazy cool videos with this. And then, then you play the vehicle and you're like, well, this isn't much different than like the tech tree variant and whatnot. Or maybe it's even worse than some of the stuff that you got in the tech tree. So a lot of these vehicles, you know, uh, are super expensive on the Gaijin market just because, um, you know, they're, they're novelties. But there are plenty of vehicles from the Gaijin market that uh, are, are quite good, 
right? And they're not just a novelty. This would definitely be one of them. It's, it's just, this is this is just wicked strong at 9 -0. Like, yeah, there's there's things you got to watch for, right? Like that TAM-2 IP that we killed and whatnot can, can pen us. But for the most part, I mean, especially in a down tier, this thing is is just wicked, uh, wicked strong, and uh, it's super fun to use. And again, again, just the, look how cool this thing is. It's just it. The, there's no vehicle in the game that looks like this. It is literally a boat with four tracks. Now, unfortunately, it does not float, but it is it is quite a novel vehicle, and it's quite a fun vehicle. You know, like, I feel like 9.0 is, is a battle rating you don't usually find a lot of people playing these days. Um, but I, I, I would say that 9.0 is, is a pretty fun battle rating, and it, this thing is, is, is obviously if, like, you're a bad player, right? I, w I would say you'd still be able to do way better in this vehicle than uh, any other one at 9.0. But if... Let's say if you're the average player and whatnot, you can rack up a, a fair bit of kills and, and do quite quite a bit of damage to the enemy team in this thing. But it's not like it's not. I, I hear a lot of people overplay, like or hype up how overpowered this vehicle is. Because you know you show us we're getting breached night whatnot. It's just, it just depends on the round that you're getting engaged with. And down tier, most certainly this thing is overpowered. There is nothing in a down tier that can even compete against this thing in terms of being able to pen it reliably but when you're at like 9.3 or even just 9 you know mostly 9.0 uh, there's a few 9.0s but mostly 9.3 is when when things get a little dodgy right dm33 dm23 any vehicles that are going to be rocking those kind of shells uh, will just absolutely rock you as well as france right you know amx30 super uh, any just anything that's got a a solid cannon on it. Now this thing, in terms of you know what it is, it gets a a really nice AP shell that can pen quite a bit of armor, and it's you know it's mobile. It's 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 not like this thing is sluggish by any means. I mean, if you're just watching the gameplay here, it's it is it's quite the maneuverable vehicle for how well armored it is. Um, and it is, I don't know, it's probably my f favorite tank I've played in this game. It, it's just, it's that fun. And it's, it's just a, it's just a breath of fresh air, right? Because I don't, I don't generally find myself playing a lot of heavies, right? Mostly main battle tanks. And so it's just a bit refreshing to, uh, to play something like this. I'm going to guess 800. Oh, that was a pretty good guess. But, you know, it's like, I don't generally find myself playing a lot of heavies, this, this, and it's not like other heavies, right? Like, if you're playing the Tiger 2 H, right, you're, you're, or the, or even the mouse, right? Mouse is a lot of fun, but it, it can feel quite sluggish. And the Tiger 2 isn't anywhere near as sluggish as the mouse, right? But you, uh, you definitely, you feel it being a bit sluggish, more sluggish than if you're like in a T-3485, right? running around in one of those. So, I generally find myself playing medium tanks or um, MBTs, just because I like to be able to move around, be able to uh, react to things happening in the match, right? Let's say if I was on the A point, right, and then the enemies are capturing the C point, I want something that I can rotate, you know, and be able to move to where the battle is and where the, where the match needs me to be. And you can, you can do that with this object 279. It is it is that good of a vehicle, right? Like, I mean, <laughs> this thing is just ludicrous. It is it is very maneuverable. Great gun. Great penetration. Like, what is there to? There's like nothing to complain about. You're gonna be you're gonna be doing. Quite some crazy stuff usually. Oh, okay. I I led that a little too far. That was my bad. So he's about a thousand meters out. So I'll do right about there. Oh, I was looking at where the eight was. That was my bad. Oh. 
too, so we'll see where that went through. We were we were choking shots there. I just got back from a concert, so like I am <laughs> quite quite sluggish. That was that was not going the way we were hoping that would go. But yeah, you know, if you're not <laughs> Not brain dead like I was just there. Like you're, in, it's gonna be pretty hard to die in this vehicle. And like uh, I just showed there, some of these, some of these tanks, you know, especially if they know where to hit you, will go right through your armor with their dart rounds. But for the most part, you're gonna ricochet a lot, especially considering you know a lot of these vehicles that can go through you are generally premium vehicles, such as uh, the. Uh, TAM 2 IP with the DM33 at 9.0, right? It's quite a scary vehicle. Generally, the major it's a great vehicle, you know, the TAM, but it is... Gee, most of the time you have people that are, um, how do I, you know, newer to the game picking up a vehicle like that. And, uh, not really going to be knowing where to shoot something like this because they just don't see it, right? So, it, you, <laughs> I've had plenty of moments where I thought I should be dead, right? And I definitely should have lost the engagements because I come flying around the corner, uh, just killed somebody, and then all of a sudden a, a TAM-2 IP comes flying around, and then I'm like, oh, shoot, he's going to get me, and then <laughs> bro just ricochets because they, they don't know where to shoot it. And if you do the little wiggle, you know, a little skirt, skirt, they, uh, they generally do not pen. So we got an enemy right over there. I'm not quite up. Oh, looks like he might be in this corridor. I'm trying to see if. Oh. So you do get. I think it's. If it's not a Dishka, like correct me in the comments, right? If it's not a Dishka, but I think it is a Dishka as your coaxial or some sort of high powered machine gun. Uh, just because I've. <laughs> Penetrated through the lower plate of a few lightly armored Swedish vehicles around this battle rating uh, with this thing's co coaxial machine gun, and it is it's quite a little deadly boy. I mean, that's that's standard with like a lot of Russian tanks, right? You usually get, especially up towards 9.0 and above, generally get a pretty nice machine gun that you can use, whether that be mounted on the roof. Or a coaxial like this, right off to the side of the gun. So we're going to push up through here. I think we're doing quite alright. I think that one dude might have died. Because I am not seeing him. I feel like we should have encountered him already. That Swedish guy. Who knows. I, I just play this game, man. <laughs> Uh, I want you to bet like 1,200. Ah, uh, he's moving too much. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna <laughs> give away my location. Something is, however, moving along the back here. I think somebody keeps spotting it up. Just so get a gauge for how far back that is. So about 900. Okay. Oh, I for sure thought he was going down. Looks to be an anti-air over there. Reaking reports, enemy spotted. Oh, I was just getting getting the territory of spawn camping here. But matches matches wrapping up. So. Attention to the designated grid square. Let's see. I'm guessing they're all behind that berm. Because, I mean, if you're getting spine camped or not doing too, too well, definitely would want to utilize that berm. I have this vehicle in uh, World of Tanks as well. And. <laughs> Let me just say that this this thing is quite disgusting in World of Tanks as well, because you can crest ridge lines and whatnot. But we uh, we've we've moved on from World of Tanks for for other reasons. I don't really I don't think I've played that game for well since I started playing War Thunder. 
<laughs> no reason to, right? So, um, let's see here. I'm I think there's still one of them back here. Yep, there is a little guy. Uh-oh. That's not good, huh? Here we go. The reverse gear is quite nice on this vehicle as well. For a Russian tank. <laughs> Always good when a when a tank has a strong reverse gear, right? Because it just just makes your life a whole lot easier. So if you accidentally overcommit and like, oh shit, <laughs> you can always fall back. Let's see here. For anybody who's getting annoyed with the repair thing popping up, I am so sorry. I'm <laughs> kind of looking around here. We're gonna repair. Yeah. Oh. oh, there we go. Okay, that was a quick repair. I, like, I didn't know what it needed to repair. I don't think there was anything. I think it just felt like doing that. We're going to leave their spawn here, though, because I do not want to go to spawn camp. So we're just going to fall back from here. Hello, Mr. Object. That tank right there is a lot of fun as well. Very fun tank for China. If you uh, have not picked up that squadron vehicle, I would heavily recommend it. Uh, always fun playing that thing. Just do make sure you got to line up right, obviously, before picking it up. Because, you know, <laughs> don't want to be that guy. So either... Uh, it's just a hand. I think it might just be that one dude on the ground. We might have a few air vehicles running about for the enemy team, but I do not think that they have any any more teammates on the ground besides him. I think it's you know, other than that, we're we pretty much clean them up. So let's see if we can race over to the B point here. See, like, this thing is just so mobile. So mobile for a heavy. It is, it's just, it is a, such a fun vehicle to, to play. Again, probably one of my favorites. And I'm, I mean, just for the, the looks as well. Like, this thing is a stunning tank. It's, it's again, quite a unique one as well, right? Like... Do not think we're going to get any more kills this game. So, yeah, my opinions on the Object 279, I think it, it strives in a lot of aspects. I think uh, mobility is one of them. The gun is, is another. The armor, obviously. And the just the, the iconic, how iconic this vehicle is if you are a tank buff. Right, this tank is super cool. Right, the whole reason it was built is to be able to survive a nuclear war, right? And having a nuke drop near it, and it's just, it's such a unique concept, right? So just, just for that fact alone. So, I, if, you know, I wish Gaijin would do more events where you could, could earn stuff like this, but at the same time, right, it, would, it, would it take away the novelty of this vehicle? Maybe, maybe not, right? Uh, let me know down in the comments if you guys think that Gaijin should do events or if they should keep things the way they are, where they do the loot boxes and um, do, you know, <laughs> all this, all these events, you know, where we can earn new cool things and whatnot. Because I think, I think you, you know, there's plenty of vehicles uh, that a lot of people want and obviously things like this, you know, do you think it's... Do you like the fact that certain vehicles on the Gaijin market cost a lot of money? Do you wish that there were other ways to earn them besides the loot boxes? Like, you know, I'm curious what your guys' thoughts are on this. You know, I'm, me, I'm fine with with either way, right? I think it's it's cool when the game lets you uh, earn content that you missed out on, but it, at the same time, you know, being a somebody who's played other games, right, where they have items that are quite unique and quite rare, 
it, it is it's it's kind of cool because it's like hey we appreciate our long-term fans right we want you to have this special vehicle that you decided to grind however many years ago and you uh you get to, to show it off and you know if other people weren't there then they weren't there <laughs> you know it's so i don't know it's it's there's two different ways to look at it right and I think what they're doing with the battle pass right now is uh, is kind of a cool thing, right? Like this, uh, this little loot box here on, I think it's 33 uh, or 38, you know? I mean, it's kind of cool for a newer player, but I think that it definitely takes away from people that have been playing this game a long time. Because, I mean, let's say you have all these vehicles, right? And then 100,000 silver lions and a gold battle wager. I mean... The gold battle wager and sure, 100,000 lions isn't much to a lot of people that play this game a lot and will have all those vehicles, but, uh, you know, I think it, it was definitely a step in the right direction. I wish that they, they still did a new boat, maybe? You could have added this in as it a maybe an item that you could buy from the shop, you know? Maybe it's it's in rank 6 of the shop and you, alongside these talismans here, or... I heard some suggestions where other content creators were talking about maybe this was a wager, like a premium, or not a wager, like a, um, a talisman, right? For a vehicle of your choice, where you could choose what vehicle you wanted that talisman on. Maybe that way, you know. Because, guys, I, you have to remember, I've, I've been playing this game for about a year and a half now, right? So I'm, I'm still new to a lot of this stuff. All this content here is a lot of uh, very fun to me, right? It's very cool. It's unique. It's all new. I've definitely played a, a lot, right? Maybe, <laughs> maybe more than the average person in this game. But I, I definitely think vehicles like this amazing object 279 are, I think a part of what makes them special is just how unique and uncommon it is to see one of these in the game, right? I mean, without if like you saw this and it was achievable by everybody and you could see it every few games, I think it would just take away the novelty of this of this vehicle, but you know, I think doing more uh, you know, like I I like loot boxes, right? I don't I don't condone other people to to go out and buy things like this. Like if they had a, a purchasable crate, you know, I think the best thing that you could do is put it in the battle pass shop just so that it couldn't be abused or whatnot by spending a lot of money. Uh, because if you limit it to where they can only buy one of them and it's with war bonds, I think that's that's fine, right? Or if you could only buy them four war bonds and you know there's a limit on how many war bonds you could stack up and whatnot. But I really do think that um, they need to, to, to figure something out, right, with these battle passes because it... A lot of people like this is a good. This was a good fix for this season, right? I, but I, I don't see people really being accepting of of this kind of loot box thing happening because, you know, the argument was, uh, what if it was a a, sh a a plane or what if it was a tank that the boxes were for, right? And I mean, it's that's a that's a fair question to ask, right? I mean. We have to, you know, talk about the elephant in the room. Not many people play naval. I'm not a big naval guy, right? But I, I wouldn't want to take away from our, our player base that does play naval. I wouldn't want to, you know, want them to miss out. And I mean, this is this naval box is coming right after that they um, did the they skipped the event for the, for this naval. Which I have to say, this boat here in itself, the one that is currently on offer. And I'm, I'm not going to butcher that name. <laughs> but this thing is quite cool. And, like, I was considering going for it. You know, it seems super cool. It's got these, like, little rockets here. It's it's definitely worth picking up if you play naval. And I am I could see myself wanting this thing and later down the road. Because I've been wanting to get into naval, right? I think I think naval has a lot of potential. Um, but in the current state, I just feel like there's just, you know, there's not enough... Um, Motivation to play it uh, besides these. Now, I think these events definitely are getting more people to play, right? So I think hopefully in the, in the future, I think uh, a lot of, like for me personally, I like modern stuff, right? I do like to occasionally play some older things. 
uh, but the way the naval set up right now, we're just not in that modern era yet, right? And I'm sure we will we'll get there at some point, right? But um, I think w where it is now is not bad by any means. I, I, you know, it's fun to play naval every now and then. But with all the stuff that... And that's the great thing about this game, right? That's the, the great thing about War Thunder is there's so much to do in this game, no matter what kind of historian buff you are, whether you're, you like naval, you like planes, you like tanks, right? Armored combat. It's, it doesn't matter what you're into, this game's got it, right? <laughs> and that's, that's one of the big things that got me to start playing this game is just the crazy level of detail, the modeling. I mean, like, look at this. Like, this is, you know, like, the, I know this is, you know, we all know this, right? We all know how modeled everything is. We all know how crazy uh, in-depth a lot of stuff is. And sure, some things don't work quite right, but that's that's expected with a, with a game of this scale. Like, if you, if you told me way, 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 like, you know, long time ago, before the War Thunder came out and whatnot, if you told me that a game like this would ever exist in my lifetime, I, I wouldn't believe you. I, I think I might be like 60 or 70 years old, right, when a game like this comes around. But for, for us people who really enjoy this kind of uh, military combat and like it in depth, like uh, what I always tell my friends is I feel like War Thunder is the game that you play if you were the kid growing up that played Battlefield with your friends, but you liked to solely play vehicles. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at you, all right? Watching this video, the, the dude who would sit there and wait to spawn in the jet, like you would wait, you wouldn't respawn immediately. You'd wait for that jet to spawn in, like to where you could spawn in it. Yeah, I'm looking at you. I know you're, I know you're watching. <laughs> But again, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I know I rambled on a little bit up there at the end, got a little sidetracked. But with that said, I'll hope to see you guys in the next one. Take care.